explained how I feel about this. But I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to be obedient to your choices. Uh, so we, uh, we did a bracket for those of you guys who don't know, we did a bracket, um, the greatest love songs. We took 64 of the greatest love songs of all time. Uh, we got, we, we, we faced them against each other. You guys voted, <laughs> not me, you guys, and you got down to a final four. I, I, I'm just kidding. These are it, some of these songs, were, it was impossible to pick between two of the greatest songs and every song. And I want you to understand this. We'll talk about this a little bit today, but see, it, you weren't picking songs. You were picking experiences you had in your life and how that song related to those experiences. So you weren't, you weren't, uh, a lot of you guys, you weren't picking, you weren't like, oh, the, the, the melodic exchange right here and the tritonal coordinates right here. You, you weren't thinking about, you weren't thinking about, oh, this verse right here is better than this verse. Or the lyrically, this is, I already told y'all, eight times eight times eight is four. Oh, that's, but you were thinking in relation to how I feel. Or how I felt at a time in my life. Some of y'all had that experience just now. Y'all like, you can do, you know, when it's no talking, when it's just this. <laughs> I can't even say nothing. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's not a worship song, but anyway, <laughs> but maybe it is. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so, um, you guys were having an experience relation to those songs you voted. And so uh, what I said was I'll accept the challenge of preaching or teaching a message in relation to the final four, your final four were, well, we'll go through them all, uh, eventually. But the first one was spend my life with, with you. Yeah. We reversed it, right? I got to spend my life with who? You are the you that you got to spend your life with. Amen. Before you, before you commit to spending your life with anybody else, you need to commit to loving yourself. Amen. Did y'all get that last? Did y'all get that last week? Okay. Okay. Now the next part, the next song that y'all picked was, uh, by an apostle named, uh, Luther Vandross, the great apostle. And he has a song, it's, 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 most of y'all don't know the name of the song, you just know the first line of the song. You just know, a chair is still a chair, even if the... Okay, don't get me started. <laughs> y'all so worldly. <laughs> but it's... Okay, all right, all right, all right. So, uh, so, so, so the title of today's sermon is, This House is Not a Home. Okay, this house is not a home. Amen. This house is not a home. And I brought up Pastor Tab because what we wanted to do is just give you guys 20 things that would make for your 2020. We want to give you 20 things that will make your house a home. Okay, 20 things that will make your house a home. Amen. I'm going to help somebody today. Amen. 20 things that will make your house a home. And we think it's important that if you have these things in your house, that they make your house a home. Um, based, uh, a lot of this we're going to base on 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Y'all know 1 Corinthians chapter 13? Okay, it's related to love. It's, called, it's literally called the love chapter. And if you guys don't know, you can, re, you, can you know, save it. Read it later. Amen. Amen. But it talks about the attributes of love. And so we want to talk about the attributes of a healthy home. Pick up that microphone. We all, we doing this together. <laughs> you with me today? Amen. We too far? Oh, no, no, it's okay. Right, we are too far though. I feel like you way over there. <laughs> A chair is still a chair. Okay. Um, so, so 20 attributes. So we need y'all help, right? We're going to go through this list uh, rather expeditiously. Amen. We don't, we don't want to spend a lot of time on each one of these. And then we might do some follow-up stuff later on, right? Right? With some uh, couples. With some real, like some couples. Not some, like, he don't claim you. Oh. Oh, no. Okay. Not some, like. Only two that know, only people that know y'all dating is you and him. Huh? I'm trying to help the people in here. The only people who know y'all together is you and him. 
Okay, we'll keep it moving. But anyway, we might do some couples, some, some couple stuff later, okay? Uh, thank you for being here with me, Pastor Tom. Amen. Okay, dating on her mic, please. And, uh, and try to match, let it match my swag, please. She got to match my swag. She wouldn't be up here if she couldn't match my swag. She couldn't. A helpmate suitable, suitable. Amen. That y'all in there? Helpmate suitable. Okay. All right. All right. So let's go, babe. Are you ready? Y'all ready for these? Okay. So we're going to go through them expeditiously. I need y'all to just shout number one. Number one. Okay. Y'all could do better than that. Just shout number one. Number one. Okay. Number one was the Bible. Yes. Okay. It, it, this will make your house a home. When I was growing up, you, everybody's house you went to had a big old white Bible in them. Nobody read it. On the coffee table. On the coffee table. It was dusty. Oh, it was dusty. But now we don't even, we don't bring the Bible into our relationships. We don't bring the Bible into our family. We don't bring the Bible. Uh, oftentimes, you, 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 you would be a better parent if you brought the Bible in. Yeah. You, you, would have, you would be a better husband if you brought the Bible in. You keep trying to convince her why she should do what you want her to do because you want her to do it. But if I can bring the word back in and if I can explain to her that, that, that matching my swag will get us to a certain level, will get us to a new place and it'll honor God. We'll deal with that later. It'll honor God. So I, what I want to do is bring the Bible back. Somebody say, bring the Bible back. Bring the Bible back. You got to bring the Bible back into your relationships. Yes. Uh, a lot of us, our relationships are dull of life and they're, and, they're, and they're missing some factors because we don't have the word of God that permeates our relationship. Amen? So we want to bring the Bible back. So if your house is going to be a home, you got to do what? Bring the Bible back. Bring the Bible back. You got anything to add to that? Oh, that was good. Boom. Number two. Shout it out. All right. Come on. Number two. That's... Number two. Getting rid of the scoreboard. Getting rid of the scoreboard. There shouldn't be scoreboards in your house. No. If your house gonna be a home, there can't be scoreboards in your house. Yeah, I mean, just bouncing off again on First Corinthians thirteen, right? It's love keeps no record of wrongdoing. So at some point, you gotta say to yourself, if you literally can remind yourself, well, remember you did this and you did this. That is literally a scoreboard. Right. right? And right. the reality is, if you turn that back to yourself, you, you have some check marks against your own name. Oh, Lord. So it's important that in the home that you don't have that scoreboard. Not, don't keep that scoreboard against your spouse. It's, right. It's, it's, it will never work for, for, um, in, in the home. Yeah. It's not healthy at all. It's yeah. not healthy. Amen? Yeah, it's diminishing returns. Yeah. Amen. It's diminishing returns. Because at some point, what you, what you do to yourself and what you do in your relationship is you say, well, I'll only go as far as that person goes. Right. And neither one of y'all are going to experience the fullness of one another because you've decided that you're not going to give your all into this relationship. Right. So we got to get the scoreboards out of our house. If you got a scoreboard in your house, get rid of it. Your right. house is not a home if there's a scoreboard there. Yes, indeed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Somebody say number three. Number three. Y'all get that right? That makes sense to y'all? Okay. Number three. Number three. No, y'all got to shout it. I'm not going to go forward unless we have some participation. Okay. Number three is put everything in its proper place. Put everything in its proper place. Now, I don't want to stay on this long, but uh, every house needs a toilet. We just don't need our toilets in the living room. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that too deep? Is that too deep for y'all? Is that too deep? It's too deep. All, every time you try to bring mess, trash, defecation into your living space, you're going to have problems. And both of y'all going to be sitting around saying, I don't know what it is, but something in this relationship stinks. I'm uncomfortable. Something in this relationship stinks. And that's because every time anything wrong happens, you bring it to the forefront of the relationship. You bring it all the way. You bring it. No, I got, I, I got trash cans in my house, but they're not in my living room. In fact, I, my trash can is, is significant. It has a lid on it. Wow. 
Some of y'all just need, you don't need a new house. You just need a lid. We dealt with this. It's over. We dealt with it. It's over. No, you're not done dealing with it. And now it's permeating the whole house. It's, it smells all upstairs. It smells in the kids' room. It's, are y'all with me today? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Is this analogy going too far? No. Okay. All right. Because you have to make sure that you have everything in your house in the proper place. This is this. Hear me right here. Kids' rooms shouldn't be in the master bedroom. You put the kids where the kids go. Some of y'all single mothers got kids in your master bedroom. You need to get your child out of the master bedroom. They don't make decisions. Are y'all with me today? Okay, so it's about putting things in their proper place. You, the reason that, uh, I heard a preacher say this just the other day. I thought it made perfect sense. It says, the reason that there is model homes is because you can't just look at the blueprint and know how the house is supposed to work. Sometimes you need a model. Right? Sometimes you need a model. And some of y'all got the blueprints. Y'all got the Bible. Y'all got the word. But y'all don't have a model. Okay, so I need a model. I need somebody, I need a, a, a model looks like a mentor, right? It looks like somebody who I'm modeling my house after, uh, my, my, you know, I'm modeling my family unit after. Does that make sense? Okay, so put things in their proper place, right? I like the example of the trash, right? Because at some point you have set days where the trash um, man comes, right? It would look absolutely ridiculous if someone came to visit you in your home and you were just collecting trash bags. Right. They would say to you, like, well, what's happening here? Right. You know, well, we're not done with that trash yet. It's yeah. not time to oh, take that yeah. trash out. We're still working on this trash right here. People would think that you were crazy. They would be like, but it stinks in here. You could have taken this out two months yeah. ago, you know? At some point, you got to be able to say, this is done. Tie the bag and take it out. This is done. Tie the bag. Take it out. This is done. Tie the bag. Take. Say this with me. This is done. Tie the bag. Boy, if you don't hear nothing else today, you heard a mouthful. This is done. You preaching, girl. You do. You, you do. Chelsea, start the car. <laughs> All, right. All right. Are we ready? Can we move on? What number we on? Somebody say number four. Number four. Um, number four is significant. It's the foundation of trust. The foundation of trust. The foundation of trust, baby. Everything is, has to be built on a firm foundation, right? The scripture talks about building the house on sand, that that's not wise, right? Right. So at some point when a foundation is messed up, you start to visibly see that in a home, right? Right. The doors don't quite shut properly. There's cracks in the wall. Things are leaning. At some point, you have to be able to say to yourself, if you seal that one crack and the foundation is not repaired, that right. crack is going to come back. Right. So you have to be able to say, let us get to the foundation and understand. And a fan, if you've ever been through uh, any type of foundation problems in a real home, it's a whole process, right? right? When somebody comes out, they have to lift it up and go come in on, there and come see, on. hey, what really is the problem so we can rectify this thing. Right. Do the work to make sure that your foundation is correct. And the foundation must start with trust. Right. All this new stuff, right. you know, where we can track each other and all of these things, it's, that's not trust. I don't need to see where you are, okay? I trust you. Our relationship is built on a foundation of trust. If you're going to be late, you'll pick up the phone and you'll call me. I won't automatically start assuming that you went to get bread and you're not never coming back. Right? I trust you. We, have a, we, we, we are in this together. We have a mission together in our marriage and in our relationship. And so with that, when we leave each day, yeah. we leave with trust. That's right. And we return back to our home, back to our home where the foundation is built on trust. Again. That's right, that's right. Stop, stop, stop. I wanna just speak to my daughters real quick. That anxiety that you have, that somebody cheating on you all the time. That's not healthy. 
that's not healthy. That's why you're depressed and you're sad and you got this whole thing because you, you want, oh, oh, what is he doing? If you got to live like, oh, hear me right here. If you got to live like, y'all got to sit down and have some sort of agreement because I can't, I can't live like this. I can't live like this. This anxiety that's, that, that, that my house is going to fall down. Right. Because there's no foundation of trust. That's right. So all the time I'm thinking this this house is gonna fall down and all the walls gonna fall in on me. That that's not that's not somewhere I want to live. Does that make sense? And you shouldn't have to live there. Amen. Amen. I didn't give you permission to get a divorce. I gave you permission to have a conversation. Look, y'all like I'm I'm PD said I don't have to live like this. You don't, but you need to have a conversation. Amen. All right, what number we on? <laughs> number, five. come on, say it together. What number we on? Five. Five. Uh, responsibilities, not roles. Yes. Responsibilities, not roles. Baby, yes. you help, help us, baby. You've been yeah. helping us so much. Help us. Everyone has a responsibility in the house. You That's know, right. When you live in a home, you, there's no point in saying, well, I didn't pick this up that's in the middle of the living room because it's your role. Yeah, it's come on. My our home, maintaining the home, is everybody's responsibility. So we have this thing where we do and we just say, like, at some point, we both do what we do best. It's not we do what we do role. best. It's not, That's right. As a woman, you're supposed to do this. As a man, you're supposed to do this. Now, and don't leave here thinking that Exo said that I don't have to do what the scripture says. That's not what I'm saying. There's, there's indeed definitions for our roles as husband and wives. But right. what I'm saying is, as it relates into the home, take responsibility for your home. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter who does it. If you were there first, why wouldn't you start dinner? Yeah. Uh oh. You, you were here for two hours, right? At some point, it's, it's not role-based, it's responsibility-based right. because we all want to eat. Right. Uh, yeah. She said we all want to eat. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Y'all missing me. Y'all better be taking notes today. Some of y'all just looking cute. You better take some notes today. No, it's serious. Uh, some of the things that you, you, you want to see in your home, if you start them, some of the practices you want to see in your home, if you start them, they'll start. Right. You want somebody else to start something. You know, the truth is, if y'all want to spend more time together, make a reservation. Yes. Pick up your, you pick up your phone. Call and make a reservation. Because if you assume that that's his role, and he don't know that that's his role, <laughs> assumptions make, assumptions get Christian people in trouble. Right? So we don't want to make any assumptions, okay? A lot of times we think certain things are our, our roles, and it's not our role. It's just our responsibility. Listen, I want to help you right here. That, 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 that whirlpool, it's not feminine. Come on. That's not feminine. That washing machine, you, it's not feminine. It's technology. You, you good at technology, right? You, you, you know how technology works. You're the technologist. Go out there and figure out how that washing machine works. Oh, I'm getting in trouble now. The men about to get tight. The men about to get tight. It was all good when everybody was like, yas, XO, yas. I say, you need to wash some clothes. You're like, oh, no, he don't even know. He don't know. I told you I don't want to come to this church. I don't know why we... All right, come on. It's responsibilities, not roles. We're all responsible for building up the house. Amen? Yes. Amen. It's not just about, oh, she's supposed to do this and she's supposed to... Hear me right here. If both of y'all... Oh, man. If both of y'all work nine hours a day, come on. then it's not just her job to cook. Right. Wait, wait. She got two jobs. It used to be, oh man, we're going to get in trouble. It used to be that you went out and hunted. And she was at home cooking and cleaning while you were out hunting. Now y'all both go out to hunt. So y'all both have to figure out how to cut up a carcass. Are y'all with me? What's cut up a carcass? Look it up. Google it. Y'all both need to know mother sauces. Go 
get no amens. The men's ministry just dissipated with that. It was the whole men's ministry just gone. Uh-huh. But y'all both need to figure, I mean, if that's the case, y'all have to work out relationally what y'all bring to the table. Or, or if not, get another job then. Um, responsibilities, not roles. What number we on? Six. I didn't hear no men say it. What number, just the men, what number we on? Six. All right, that's what I'm talking about, man. Man up out here. Man up out here. I don't like washing clothes, so I need four jobs because I don't like washing clothes. <laughs> Number six. Uh, speaking of, okay, now I get to help the men. Okay, good. Number six. What's number six? Order. Establish order. Yes. Establish. Okay, so a, a home, uh, a home, a home is an organism. Every organism needs order. Every organism needs order. Does that make sense? So if there's no order, I mean, my, my entire body is my body, but my head has to lead. If my hands have to lead, then my body is out of order. Does that make sense? So, so at some point, I have to establish order in my house so that there's order in the organism, okay? That's where we get the word organization from. It comes from organism. Does that make sense? And so I got to get organization. Okay, so that means what? Well, it looks like umbrellas. I, I, I meant to bring this out and show y'all as a photo. We'll, I'll post it later or something. But there's, there's order, right? There's God. He's the top umbrella. That means he covers us. There is man. He is the next umbrella. He covers his wife and his children and his family, the dog, everybody just falls under his umbrella, right? Then there's wife. She covers the children, okay? Now, understand that. So there, there has to be an order. Now, am I in charge because I'm smarter than her? No. Not at all. Not even close. Some of y'all know. You just look, look straight at me and say, amen. You know you're not smarter than her. That's why you can't win no arguments, because she's smart, boy. She got four points in a poem. You don't even know. you just be like, I'm tired of this. That's all you got. <laughs> Am I in charge? Right. <laughs> Lord, I love this church. I'm not in charge because I'm bigger, stronger, smarter, none of that stuff. I'm in charge because God left me in charge. That's it. Y'all ever been in school and the substitute teacher was in there or the teacher was in there and she'd leave the class and she looked right there and she said, hey, you in charge. Not because you good. Really, probably because you was the closest one to the door. She, just, she saw you. But you do have a responsibility now. And so you got to honor the responsibility that belongs to you, even though you're not qualified, even though you're not qualified to be in charge. Are you with me today? You not, let, hear me right here. You not, none of us, we're not qualified. You're not qualified to look after a human. God entrusted you with them. Okay. So you need to recognize that I've been entrusted with this family and now it's my responsibility to take care of this family. Does that make sense? Are y'all with me today? Okay, so, but I have to establish order. There, ha there has to be order because wherever there is not order, you have disorder. That makes sense? Yes, disorder is the absence of order, okay? Okay, so you can't have a house that's in order if there's no order established, okay? All right, beautiful. Can we move on? What are we on? Sacredness and sanctity, okay? Sacredness and sanctity. I want to just take a second to talk about this because marriage is holy. Marriage is holy. And in all our, our enjoyment and in, in, in everything we do and being in relationships, I, want to, I, I wonder do we remember that marriage is holy, sanctioned by God. It is a holy moment. And if, on, if the only time you have a holy moment in your marriage is when you come to church, you missed it. Marriage is holy. You need to treat it as such. 
You need to treat it as such. Are y'all with me today? I'm talking to the men and the women. Stop treating it like, oh yeah, well we married today and we're not married tomorrow. We married the next day, we not. No, 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 no. There's a certain amount of sanctity and holiness in relation to what y'all talk about in y'all bed shouldn't leave y'all bed. I'm legally bound. I'm, I'm legally bound by what they call the clergy law. The clergy law says that you can come to me and tell me that you did something and I can't tell a soul. You could sue me. You could take my license. You could take, I could never be able to be a clergy in Texas again because I didn't keep the sanctity of our conversation. Now that's only not true about murder and suicide. You say you murdered somebody, I'm turning you in. I pray for you from the other side of that glass. Man, you've been doing all right, man. Man, I'm praying for you, man. God, I love you, man. man you need anything? I left 20 on the commissary, man. I love you. All right. Murder, suicide. If you say, I'm, I, 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 feel, I think I'm going to harm myself, it's my responsibility to take an action because of that, okay? Uh, but other than that, you have, a, you have a sanctity. Any licensed member, any licensed minister here at God Chasers, if you tell them something, hear me right here, licensed ministers. If you tell them something in confidence, they cannot take that confidence away from what y'all's relation. I don't care if it's a friendly dinner. Whatever you tell them in sanctity, it belongs to y'all too. That's it. They can't tell nobody. Okay? That's it. They're locked into this. Let's bring that sanctity back into our relationships. Your husband tell you his vulnerabilities, you go tell your girlfriend. You go tell your sister. You go tell your mama. That's why at Thanksgiving she'd be like, and that's why. Lord have mercy. You stole the, the holiness from y'all's relationship. Bring the, restore the sacredness and holiness back to your relationship. Amen. Come on and celebrate that. Y'all could clap for that. Bring the bring holiness back to your relationship. There's stuff that my wife knows about me that none of y'all will ever know. I don't care how close you get to her. That's right. You ain't going to get closer to her than I am to her. Yeah. There's a sanctity about it. There's a sanctity about it. Stop telling everybody about your husband, your, your significant other, and what's going on with y'all. And how you know, That's right. That's right. Sacredness and sanctity. Boy, I, I, I could teach a whole sermon on this. There's a whole idea about how sacred it is. Your marriage bed, sacred. Amen. Your bedroom, sacred. I remember growing up, my mama wouldn't let me even bring people in her bedroom. They couldn't, she, we couldn't open the door to her bedroom. It was sacred. Boy, if y'all don't hear me preaching in here. You get to work and tell everybody about what's happening in your bedroom. Just cut it out, it's sacred. Y'all just don't know him. He just, he just, God have mercy. Okay, let, let's move on. I'm, I feel my holy indignation rising up. Okay. All right. Uh, no, what number we on? Hey. Oh, we got to speed up. Okay. <laughs> the beauty of do benevolence. Yeah. The beauty of do benevolence. Okay. Okay, I want to help the ladies in here. Hear, hear my heart right here. M men need two things above all. One of them is honor. <laughs> men need honor. We eat it. We don't, we, we don't just like it. We are sustained by it. Okay? And oftentimes, if we don't find honor, just like, a, just like, a, just like any other animal, if there is no food present in this area we will walk to another area to find what what we're starving for men need honor they need it they they crave it you say oh yeah, yeah. i ain't got time to be complimenting him okay 
he'll migrate. He's, he, he'll, he'll migrate. He'll move where the food is. The second thing they need is do benevolence. Paul said, render unto one another, render unto your husband his due benevolence. What does that mean? Well, that, that means that when y'all are in a marital relationship, we ain't that new. When y'all in a marital relationship, that you, 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 you owe him. You owe him physicality. You owe him sex. It's due to him. It's called due benevolence. It's like you owe, you know, like at the end of the week when you've been working long and then you, you, you don't get that direct deposit. And you start checking all your accounts and everything. Uh, maybe they, maybe it switched to the, that direct deposit is due benevolence. It's not, it's, it's not yours to decide. The, body say, the Bible says that your body is not your own. When you are given in marriage, your body is not your own. It's not yours to decide what you're going to do with it. If, if, you, if you fasting, you better bring him in on that fast. You better let him know. No, I'm just praying about some things, and if we could just... No, no. Yeah. Look, it's getting tight in here. They don't want to talk about it no more. Let's get back to laughing and joking. Do benevolence. Okay, listen. Uh, just like honor, he, he doesn't just want it. He needs it. Okay? He, he doesn't just want it. He needs it. And if... if uh, he, he'll feed himself. He'll figure out where to eat. It's in his instinct to figure out where to eat. You better feed that man, girl. The beauty of due benevolence. God, 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 God gave him, the, listen, God, God created him whole and then took something from him. God created him whole. All one, right, Pastor Kelly? All one. Created him whole. He wasn't alone. He was all one. He, he robbed him to make you. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's good. And he needs you to feel whole again. Right. Does that make sense? Okay, make that man whole. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> oh, it's getting tight. <laughs> oh, it's getting tight. What's wrong? Oh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I love you, Carrie. All right. Uh, number nine. Number nine. Number <laughs> Where's the joy? Number nine. Number nine. Okay. Number nine is relationship rules. You got to establish rules for your relationship. You got to establish rules for your relationship. Pastor Tap. I think every, you need to have basic house rules right you need to establish what basic house rules will will work in your home before she before she goes deeper what game can you play where you and the other person don't know the rules y'all have to establish rules if y'all in the game y'all gotta establish rules and every every relationship is different so you need a different set of rules right okay. right yeah, that's good because when, before you start playing it, you know, there are multiple ways to play different games. When you sit down with the person, you literally ask them, right, and you say, hey, well, how are we playing this game? Right. Right? Before we get started, 20 minutes in, I don't right. want to be told, you're cheating. Yeah. Well, you didn't say this was part of the rules, right? So yeah. at some point, you need to operate by a certain set yeah. of rules. Tend to get in. Don't play with me. Tend to get in. Tend to get in. No, no nicks, no nicks. We playing jailhouse rules. Okay, I'm sorry. Come on, Come on man. But just set your set your relationship rules, and then that be what you work by. Right. right? This is right. what we live by. There should be some rules that you have. Like when you think about a home, nobody has to tell you to close the fridge when you get done. 
It's just a rule of the house, right? Nobody walks behind you every time and says, did you close the fridge? That's right. not what it is. As we've established, the fridge doesn't remain open here. Close the cabinets when you're done, right? This is basic house rules, and you should have those basic house rules in your relationship that you're, that it's part of you. It's just, good, you don't have to have somebody constantly reminding you. These are just our relationship rules. Right. That's good. That's good. And you have to establish those rules because the truth is both of you guys are an amalgamation of how you were raised Amen. and your own yes. experiences. But the problem is she wasn't raised how you was raised. And you weren't raised how she was raised. And some of y'all got different ideas about different things, you know, at some point. And so y'all have to sit down and start establishing these rules. And that's what the dating period is about. Establishing, okay, well, does this negotiation, does this make sense? And does it, so on and so forth. And if you don't figure that stuff out, you don't establish those rules, then both of y'all be playing very different games. Very different games. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's good. All right, let's move on. What's, what number are we on? Yeah. Number 10, halfway, let's go. The fruit of faithfulness. Everybody in their house, you need the fruit of Faithfulness. You need the fruit of faithfulness. Okay, so how do I get the fruit of faithfulness? Well, I plant the seeds of faithfulness. Yeah. Pastor Tab was talking about this a little while ago, and some of y'all, you know, I saw you smiling in your seat because you didn't want to say anything. You're like, no, take the GPS off my phone. Yeah, you can take the GPS off your phone when you start calling and saying, hey, I'm, I'm here. When I finish here, I'm going to be here. And then when I finish here, I'm going to... See, these are, the, these are what you call the seeds of faithfulness. And the seeds of faithfulness will produce the fruit of faithfulness. If y'all have anxiety all the time about where you are and what you're doing, it's because you sowed seeds. It's because you sowed seeds at some point. Or some other man did. And you got to till up the ground. Dig up the weeds that make her feel that way. It's your job to provide her that level of security, right? Is it because, because like you eat honor and sex, she eats security. She needs it. She craves it. Okay? She needs it. So, so it's, it's really just about establishing um, those, those ideas about the, fruitful, the, the fruit of faithfulness and knowing that if you plant the seeds of faithfulness, then you can eat the fruit of faithfulness. Does that make sense? Okay, you got to have fruit of faithfulness in your house, okay? Y'all with me? Okay, anything to add to that? Let's keep it going. Number what? Come on, y'all, with some energy. Number what? There we go. Number 11. Uh, I, I cheated on this, but it's honor. Okay? I gave y'all the first one. Do benevolence. Two things men have to have. Honor, do benevolence. Two things. That, it's, it's not, it, 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 one of my pastors say, it's not a game. It's not a game. It's a real thing. Okay? Now, it, it, what does honor look like? Well, the Bible says to give honor where honor is due. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm always giving honor because I'm always due honor. Does that make sense? Everywhere I am, honor is due because I'm due honor. So everywhere I am, I give honor. I give honor. And particularly once we start establishing roles and respons excuse me, responsibilities and order in our relationship, then I understand that I have, to, I have to respond with a certain level of honor. All relationships need honor. Right. And as for women, when it comes to your husband, the reality is that you picked him. If it's not somebody that you could honor in your dating season, then what would make you think that there was going to be an honor switch that turned on when you got married? Or if he wasn't honorable during your dating season. Right, right. He wasn't honorable with you. Right, right. So at some point, you got to be careful. In the dating season, if this is not somebody, every time you're, you're, you're like, uh-uh, I don't know. You know, at some point, why say I do then? Right? Because it, then it's going to be super tough for you to honor this man. You know, right. it's right. your choice. It's right. not someone that you're not being forced to marry this person. It's your choice. And if you can't be honored, if you can't honor him in the dating season, it's not going to click on him when you get married. Right. Amen. Amen. Give honor where honor is due. It's always due me, so I'm always going to give it. Amen. That's I'm right. always going to give it. Um, uh, what number are we on? Well. Okay. Number 12 is the power of of agreement. Somebody say the power of agreement. The, power of agreement. the Bible says where two, where two 
or three, where two or three gather together in my name, there will be nothing that will be impossible for That's them. Right. This is agreement. God is establishing agreement. Relationships are about agreement. And the, the Bible says in another place, it says, how could two walk together except they are agreed? I love my dad says this. He says, he says, not that they do agree, but that they have agreed. They have already agreed. We can't even start walking together unless we establish some agreement. We establish some agreement. I think that's beautiful. That how can we walk together? How can we move at the same pace? Some of you guys have heard me talk about uh, my wife and I and that we, we dance. Like literally, that's what we're calling it. We, we dance in our relationship. I lead. We step in a certain way. I, I curtsy her, but we, we are, we're dancing together. But we can't dance if we're not agreed. Right. We're not agreed about, you know, it's got to be more than he fine. Oh, he's so fine. Oh, he's right. so fine. What do he believe? Amen. What do he think? And, and, and stop thinking you could change him. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Ooh, them claps were strong at about 12, 40. Them claps getting weaker like that. Stop, stop, th stop thinking you can change him. No, it's about agreement. Y'all have to have a, a, a base level of agreement. Pastor right. Tab and I, when we were dating, we dated for two years before we got married. Right. When we were dating, we, 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 we talked about everything. We talked yeah. about, we knew how many kids we were going to have. We did. We, we, knew, we knew it all because we talked about it. Right. We agreed on it. And a lot of times, by the time you come to sit in our office, that because you have a problem, it's, it's just simply because y'all forgot to agree on something. That's right. What do we agree on? What do we agree on? So what we try to do in, in Marriage Counseling 101 is we try to just establish agreement. Before we start talking about what we disagree about, let's just establish what we do agree about. What do we agree about? And then we can work from there. Do, do, do you love him? Well, yeah, I love him. Of course I love him, Pastor Dante. <laughs> Do you love her? Yeah, I mean, you know, she's everything to me. I, I love her. Well, let's start from right there. Let's, start, let, let's not start from what time you should be home. Let's just start from, because if I love her, I will honor what she needs. Right. Because I always got to go back to the place where we do agree. Does that? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Oh, it felt like you had something. I was good? Yeah. I did good? Come on. Thank you. <laughs> Still trying to impress her since I was 17 years old. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. What number we on? 13. 13. Uh, what was number 12? Just making sure you yeah. okay. Good, good, good. Okay, let's establish agreement. Okay, number 13. Um, the practice of peace the practice of peace listen man hey uh in the bank's house it's like i'm running for president it's peace that's all that's all i want you know what samson wanted from you know what samson wanted in his life peace he spent all day fighting he spent all they fighting. He wanted to come. And he was willing to get his hair cut for peace. He was willing to get his hair shaved off for peace. Girl, it ain't no end to what that man will let you do to him if you give him peace. If he could put his head in your lap. The Bible says that a, I'm not making this up. The Bible says that a nagging wife is like a dripping faucet. There's a, there's a thing they call it, a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, I'm not going to say it. It's a torture technique. Yeah. I'm not going to ascribe it to any nationality. It's a torture technique that says you could crack a man's skull by just dripping water. It's got to be peace. Y'all got to practice peace. Sometimes I'm thinking I need to talk because we work together, right? We, we work together. We're in a relationship and we work together. Sometimes that's very difficult because I want to fix the problem, but I got to practice peace. That's right. Okay. So I want to fix the problem, men. I want to fix the problem, but I got to practice peace. So I got to figure out what's the appropriate time to fix the problem. I might have to wait till we get back to the church to fix the problem. 
because in my bed, I'm going to practice peace. Does that make sense? In your relationships, figure out how to practice peace. You don't have to fix it all at this dinner table. Right. Yeah, that's good. I, it, timing, right? It's so important. Right. Timing is vital. Don't just upset the entire day with something that you can literally wait for a while to discuss. And for the most part, when, you, when there's a problem, you, you need to be able to really communicate what the issue is and not that emotional stuff, right? You don't want to just have this big old moment of, of crying and nobody can understand you and you, you're wondering, okay, what are you really trying to say? And I'm not saying that you can't cry. Or you can't when you have said that you... <laughs> right. I, 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 take your time. Right. Come back. Formulate a real sentence. Right. Okay? And that, that wasn't a woman. That was a man. That's, that's what y'all be doing. I know some of y'all men. Don't even play with me. You, right. you have said that you didn't like my mama. Right. But there's no reason to disrupt your entire peace when you articulate a problem. There's no reason right. for that. That's right. Keep the problem the problem. Here's the problem. That's right. But after we discuss this, we're still going to have peace. Even if right. we're not in agreement yet, we're not going to disrupt the peace in our home with yes. trying to get through this one problem. Right. Sometimes agreement looks like we'll deal with this tomorrow. Right. Okay. Or we'll deal with this next Friday at, you know, three o'clock. Okay. Does that make sense? Y'all yeah. y'all still with us? Yeah. What number are we on? 14. Number 14. Practice common goals. Make sure you have common goals. Make sure you have common goals. I want to deal with the men again. Let's get, let's get back to this. Some of y'all are leading your family in a way that if, uh, if, you're, if, uh, if Phil Jackson was leading his team in that way, or if, and if you don't know who Phil Jackson is, I ain't talking to you. If, you, if Phil Jackson is not leading, leading his team in such a way, it, who's the Cowboys coach now? Oh, y'all don't got one. Y'all don't got one. Y'all just don't got one right now. Okay. All right. I was just checking. But whoever you are. Ooh, whoever you are, who, whoever the coach is, has to have a game plan. And a lot of times, y'all, y'all, y'all men, hear me right here. You're approaching these relationships just like, well, we together. But what's y'all game plan? Where are y'all going? Y'all need a first I got on this thing, then we got on this thing, and then we get, do y'all understand what I'm saying? It needs to look like a game plan. And you're approaching this relationship where, the, for you, the goal was just to get married. Now we married. But no, we got to establish a new game plan. We got to, that's not, the marriage is not the end, it's the beginning. What is, our, what is our family mission statement? Where are we going? What are we trying to do? I wanted to, while we were riding in the car, I would tell the kids what our dreams were. Yeah. So that everybody knows. So we can all line up to try to get to where our dreams are. You got to establish those. But if y'all don't have common goals, what will happen is y'all will get together based on some other stuff. Amen. Amen. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. He, he fine. He smell good. He just, you know. She, she looked good. She shaped like a uh, whatever. Y'all playing, but I'm serious. Y'all, some of the stuff, some of the reasons that some of y'all get married are so weak. And then you wonder why your marriage is not strong. Y'all got married on that weak. You got married assuming that y'all would always look like y'all look. That's good. But it's got to be more than that. It's got to be deeper than that. It's got to be character stuff, right? So it, it, her and I, we establish goals and dreams together, right? And then every time we accomplish one of those dreams, we check one of those dreams off. We high-five each other, and then we establish another one. Okay? We establish, we've been married 23 years. We got some more dreaming to do. Yes. Right? Right? You got to have common goals. Does that make sense? So it's about establishing common goals. What are our common goals, right? Okay, good, good. All right, can we move on? Yeah. What number we on? 15. What number we on? 15. Okay, number 15. Have a culture of creativity. A culture of creativity. A culture of creativity. What's that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, in relationships, you, 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 I'm going to use this word, and y'all going <laughs> to... You have to stimulate one another. Yeah. 
Now, if the only time that you have the ability to stimulate anybody is from the... <laughs> I feel like I'm just talking like nobody's watching on the internet or anything. <laughs> Y'all got to have the ability to stimulate each other's mind, right. stimulate each other's thought process. When I, when, after a conversation with, with, with my wife, I should want to do better. Right. I should want to be better. I should, I should want to I should want to engage uh, more in our conversations because she stimulates my mind. Right. She helps me to think. She helps me to process. She came downstairs this morning. I was working, you know, 6.30. And I didn't even have to, I mean, we, we could talk about relationships with our eyes closed. Right. We could just talk about 23 years. That's what we could yeah. just do. And we just say, 23 years, we did this. But we, we, did, we did sit down, work, study. So this morning, I'm still working. She comes downstairs. She says, hey, what are you working on? I say, well, I'm just sort of working through what we're going right. to talk about today or whatever. She says, well, what? How do you do that? And why'd you do this? And her, all of a sudden, I got turned on. I mean. <laughs> hear me. Yes. Not physically. That's mentally. She, tur she turned me on mentally. See, y'all already. <laughs> y'all minds just dirty. She got me excited. I was, I was set up. You know, and I was like, well, first, you know, I, I put on my TV right here because I need to hear what T.D. Jakes got to say about it. And then I want to write what this and it, and it just made me excited about and she had the ability through her creativity to stimulate my mind. Try, be, be stimulants. Amen. In your relationships. OK, be stimulants. OK, OK. Does that make sense? OK, number 16. Number 16. Mm. Number 16. Are y'all getting something out of this? Is this helping y'all at all? Okay, number 16. The, have the furniture of forgiveness in your house. Yes. Furniture of forgiveness. A house is not a home without the furniture of forgiveness. Some of y'all living in empty houses right now. Because you're not willing to forgive. Yeah. You're not willing to forgive. You want to touch on that? Forgive and extend grace to each other, right? At some point, I think that we got to be able to say to ourselves, what I desire, when I want to be forgiven, that's the same, when I want to be forgiven, excuse me, it's the same way that I should forgive him, right? When you ask somebody for forgiveness, you expect it immediately. Right. You don't expect for somebody to tell you, come back in five days and I'll see about forgiving you, right? And so at some point in the home, we should be able to forgive each other quickly. If somebody says, I was wrong, I, I made a mistake, can you please forgive me? You should be able to say to yourself, this is what it looks like when we go to God and we say, God, I was wrong, will you please forgive me, right? And he doesn't say to you, no, give me a few weeks. I'm not ready to forgive you. forgive you, right? So the same way that you desire to be forgiven is the way that forgiveness should be in your home. Right, that's, that's so awesome. Now, again, that, that's not to say you can't be upset. Right. I forgive you, I'm still upset. Right. I'm still a little. Right. I still got a little. And we got to deal with that. Right. But, and we got to deal with why you did what you did. Right. It's not just I forgive you and then we just sweep it under the rug. Right. It's, we got to deal with why. With, but it's got to start with forgiveness. We can't even sit down and have the conversation until we begin with forgiveness. Does that make sense? That's good. Okay, beautiful. Can we move on? Good. I feel like y'all have questions. Maybe we'll stay afterwards if y'all want to ask questions. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Um, number 17. S say number 17. number 17. The promise of possibility. The promise of possibility. Your house is not a home if there's no possibility in it. If everything is your way or the highway... Everything is your rules, your, you, you manage it. And, and again, this is husbands, wives, whatever. This is, if everything is your way, then y'all don't have the, the, the promise of, uh, of possibility. Most of us love to be in a relationship because of this. Because we love that promise of what could be. This could be something. I could, I, I, I could be a better person because of this. I could uh, live a better life because of this person. And when we get engaged in relationship, when we get tight in relationship, that possibility shouldn't go away. We should always be thinking about what 
I could be what I could accomplish because I got this person in my life. Does that make sense? So it's always about the promise of possibility. I, I'm going to say this again. Men, hear me right here. That's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to say what y'all could be. To say what y'all, what God, what you feel like God is taking y'all. That's your responsibility. Okay? All right. Men, okay? All right. Number what? All right. Number 18 is simple. Truth. Your house is not a home if there's no truth there. That's right. Truth is the is is more than the than the than the foundation. Truth is literally what holds the walls up. That's right. If there's no truth, right. man, everything's falling apart. If there's no truth, everything's falling down. That's so it's right. got to start with truth. Yeah, I think you know there's there's moments in the in, in our home and in our relationship where I'll just say you know. Tell me how I can love you better. Tell me how I can be a better wife. And it's his opportunity to tell me the truth, right? Yeah. And you got to be able to accept that that's his truth. If he says, I need you to do X, Y, Z, okay, got it. But I trust him that he won't hurt me with that truth either. Lord have mercy. Right? I trust that in communicating his truth, he'll say it in a way that's not going to kill me. Right? So as women, that sometimes it's important that yes, there's truth, but you gotta have some truth and then attach that thing with some seasoned wisdom in your Come speech. On. Come right? on. Be able to say this in a proper way that I'm gonna speak my truth, but it's never intended to kill you. Come it's on. It's intended for us to be stronger. That's so good. That, no, that's really good. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, so we have to establish truth. We start from that place, we work from that place, and some things that, that I may feel uh, are truthful. They, they may be tough. Right. They may be tough, but we have to work through that place, right? Grace and truth. Okay, grace and truth. I make sure I give. I make sure I season my truth with grace. Come on, that's good. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Jesus came to bring grace and truth, so I got to make sure I season my truth with grace. That's okay. Right. All right. Beautiful. Number nineteen. Number nineteen. Y'all getting this, man. Y'all getting this. Okay, it's communication. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Communication. communication. So, one of the things that I got to have um, it. interesting to me, I always like to see how when if you're going to a place and a man is leading like the caravan, you know, everybody's following. I always wonder like how they allow the people behind them to follow. Okay, wait. I, I, I need to make sure y'all understand what she's saying. Okay, have y'all ever been like in a four car, like all of y'all going to the same place? We talk about this all the time. Okay, right. so there's one car out in the front and there's one car in the very back. Right. And to see how those, usually men, yes. to see how those men, it, how they deal when people are following Yes. It's so significant to us how you respond to people who are following you. I know somebody who I was, I was with me and Pastor. Oh, we're going to get in trouble. Anyway, me and Pastor Mo was somewhere and we were with somebody and he, and he said, okay. He said, <laughs> Pastor Mo, you remember this? He probably don't remember. He said, okay, we going to this place. Y'all can follow me. And we was like, cool. Before we even got our seatbelts on in our car, his tire says, scream! <laughs> and he was gone. And we were on the highway like going 90 miles an hour. Trying to keep up. Now, we had never been to this place. We had never been to this place. And it taught me the kind of leader he was. He taught me the kind of man he was. Right? Because he was way out ahead of us. He had no concern for that we were following him. Yeah, that, that's it. It's communication is key, right? When you're the leader, you're saying, we, this is where we're going. Well, you have to turn around every now and then and make sure that I'm still right there behind you, right? right? And that may mean that you have to pick up the phone and say, hey, where are you? And even when we go places where I may know where I'm going and I follow him, yeah. we're driving and he, I always let him pull off first and then he takes the lead. At some point, if he doesn't see me, he'll call and I'll say, I'm two cars behind you, right? That communication is vital. You have to be able to communicate in the home, and especially if you're leading. Yeah. Women, what, this is what you'll force a woman to do as a man. If you don't communicate, where am I? I'm gonna take out my phone and figure out how to get there on my own, right? 
Now you've just made me say to myself, I couldn't, I couldn't trust you to communicate where we were going, and so now I have to define how to get there all by myself, right? right. So I see you when I get there, and then when you get so, there- So you teach her not to need you. Yes, come on, that's good, that's right. That's right, and then when you get there, you 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 don't understand why she feels the way she feels, and it's like, well, I got here by myself. You didn't yeah. communicate to me how I could get to this destination. Turn around, make sure I'm still following you. Communicate the next steps. What does six months look like? What's the three month goal? What's the six month? What's twelve months? And then communicate back with me to make sure that I understand where we're trying to go. Right. Right. No, that's so good. That's absolutely. Y'all could give it up for this. That was great. Now, I, I just want to flip it for a second. I mean, let me add one more point to that. A lot of times men don't communicate because they don't know where they're going. You got to get better at being vulnerable right there. You got to get better at saying, hey, I, I really don't know, but I'm, let's pray about it together. And let's try to figure out where we're going to go, how we're going to get there together. I, I, I know. I've been there before where she's like, you don't know where you're going? Of course I know where I'm going. And it's okay. I know, I know. I'll say, I, I fall asleep. I tell him all the time. I say, I, as long as you know where we're going, I'm good. Yeah. Now, he says to me, they take out the map or take out, well, we don't use maps anymore, but we definitely had a story. See, we've been together a long time. We used to, we got the whole map out. This is a, this is a, got pencil marks on it. Y'all don't know nothing about that. You can't just drop a pen back then. We had to make our way right there. Yeah, it was find the ultimate route on the big map. Okay, I got you. But at some point, if he says, it's My navigator right there. Y'all don't know nothing about, you need a navigator. Need a navigator. One of y'all got to look at the road while the other one look at the map. Y'all not hearing me right here. I'm preaching in this Holy Ghost tabernacle. Better get you a navigator. <laughs> but if he engages me, if he says, hey, you know, take a look, see if you can find, use this app or use that app to see if we can find an alternate route. Route. Okay, then I'll do that. But otherwise, I've told him before, there are places, even in the city, that we'll go. And I'm like, I have no idea how we got there because he's driving. I'm just riding. I know that he knows where we're going, and I trust that he's going to get us to our destination. So I'll be doing other things. I'm not paying attention to where we're going because he's, he's already said, come on, this is where we're going. And I trust him that he's going to get us to where we need to be. Amen. Amen. So th th one more thing. I want to get off this communication, but I, 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 I really can't. Okay. I need you to know. Okay. We talked about it from a man's perspective. I want to flip it. Let's talk about it from the woman's perspective. I need you to know that he don't know how you feel until you right. tell him. That's good. Nobody clapped. It's okay. That's so good. I need you to know that he don't know how, not only does he, he don't feel how you feel, right. he don't think how you think, he don't know how you feel until you tell him. That's so good. We really are, uh, we really not that bright. I'm just trying to keep it 100 with you. We really, we're not getting the signals, we're not figuring it out. You're going to have to say something. Look, I'm, I'm being 100. We really not. We need you to sit down. <laughs> we need you to say something okay we need you to say something now you're gonna have to speak up okay and i know a lot of times it's difficult because you are a seer um you are a, a, in the biblical sense of a seer where you you might not see it directly but you feel it in your heart sister mama woman you're gonna have to figure out how to articulate it you're gonna have to figure out how to say it i know you feel it you're going to have to figure out how to say it because if you don't know how to say it, no matter how you feel, you're not communicating. You're not communicating. And you're going to be like, well, I told you I didn't like. No, you didn't. Well, well, I made that face. Well, that don't mean nothing. And, and, and silence is not communication. Right. right. At some point, right. you've got to be able to say whatever it is that's frustrating you to not want to speak. Figure out how you can communicate what you really feel 
that made you silent, right? Right. You got to be able to communicate that. Hey, this is where I really want to eat. Hey, you yeah. picked this restaurant and I really don't like it. Yeah. You know, at some point, it, like Petey said, the only way he'll know is if you express it. Right. You have to say it. But this is where we go back to say, okay, speak your truth, but add some grace to it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like y'all use season all? Yeah. That's how you sprinkle grace on everything you say. Now I say like y'all use season oil, so you <laughs> take the cap off and pour it in there. Season oil. Anyway, okay. <laughs> All right. Are we ready for the last one? Yeah. What what number we on? Number 20. Okay, what's number 20? Oh Lord. Roxanne. Okay, what's number 20? Number 20 is joy. Number 20 is joy. That's right. Number 20 is joy. Number 20 is joy. Uh, the Bible encourages us to rejoice in the Lord always. You should have a certain level of joy in your relationship. If, if you can't figure out how to spark joy in your relationship, you need to work on you some more. Okay? You need to work on you some more. You got to figure out how to ignite joy. If this person likes this certain thing, give them, bless them with what they like. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you're, not, you're not punishing them. You, you don't got to try to punish them in, in, in y'all's relationship. Does that make sense? You, just because they didn't do something or whatever. No, you got to figure out how to bring joy back to y'all's relationship. And if that means that I got to sacrifice so I can bring joy back to our relationship, then that's what I'm going to do. We're going to have joy. I just want to keep it 100 with y'all. I like her. I like being with her. I like spending time with her. And I like to see her happy. So I'm going to figure out what I got to do to keep her happy, to keep that smile on her face. And if you don't, if you don't have that level of sacrifice in you, you're not ready to be in a relationship. That's Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. And enjoy the beauty of the relationship, right? That you should be able to enjoy it. If, if there is no joy in it, then what, what, is it, what are you doing? Yeah. Right? It's, there's no reason to live day to day without having that joy in the marriage, in the relationship. You should be able to say to yourself, you know, like Peter just said, it's, if you, if I give, if I give to him with it, with whatever I do, saying this brings him joy, and then he in return gives back to me to say, hey, this brings her joy. Then there's no lack of joy. Right. What happens is we often say, well, I want you to do these things for me to bring me joy, but then we don't reciprocate it. Right. Right. We don't say, hey, this is what brings you joy as well. Right. So enjoy the relationship. Have joy in your home. Yeah. Nobody wants to go to a place where the joy does not abide. Right. 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 And so we talked about this, right? So I notice that we're not saying happy. Okay. Happy has to do with happenstance. That's right. That it has to do with what's happening. Okay, and so I'm happy because of what's happening. Right. But I want to tell you, like, you don't get to be with somebody for t almost 25 years. Right. You don't get to be with somebody that long and, and, and always be happy. Right. That's right. It's not about that. Yeah. It's not about happiness. Okay. Right. It's about joy because joy says that even though we're having a hard time right now, or I, I, I believe we can get through this. Right. This person still makes me feel better about myself. I, right. I still feel better when I'm with her than I, than I felt by myself. I want to deal with this as well for you singles. Okay. I want to deal. And I know we haven't talked a lot in the place of singles. True, hear me right here. Write it down. Take a picture. You're going to need right. all this stuff because you're going to be yes. in a relationship. Okay. But I want you to understand something something if you can't make you happy nobody can make you happy if you don't have joy about who you are and about what God's doing in your life and about how, and about where you were and where you are if you don't have those things nobody can make you have did he can y'all hear me right here nobody can make you happy no relationship having having somebody is not going to make you happy i know a lot of people who have people and who are still unhappy you got to figure out how to bring joy into your life, how to bring enjoyment into your life. You got to figure out what you like and then be able to communicate that when you do get into a relationship, be able to communicate that this is what I, this is what I like. This is what gives me joy. This is what makes me happy. Do y'all do uh, do understand where I'm going? So even in your, even 
as you are single right now, and I said this last week and I will say it again, if you cannot find happiness when you are single, you will not find happiness when you're in a relationship. It won't work. I said this before, I said it again, if you can't be happy single, you can't be happy. Do y'all hear me right here? So you gotta figure out, okay, what gives me joy? What gives me joy? And then I gotta surround myself with people who bring me joy. It's That's not right. just about who I go with. This is not just relation, relationships as far as, you know, and we talk a lot about man-woman relationships and marriage, but I, I want you to understand this. Like, whoever is in your life should bring you joy. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, right. You don't gotta clap. Hear me right here. Some of, some of you are surrounded by people who don't bring you joy. You got to start figuring out w w w what, what the tie is to that person. Some of us are soul tied to people who don't bring us joy. I got to figure out how to cut that soul tie, okay? Because I, I want to enjoy my life. I want to enjoy my, myself. I want to go out to a movie. Some of y'all, you better call up your homies, your girlfriends. Y'all better go to the movies. Treat yourself to the movie. And, 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 I don't care. Rent a limousine. <laughs> Buy some flowers. Y'all know how I do Get them delivered. When they get there, say, oh, these are beautiful. You ain't lying. They are. <laughs> these are gorgeous. But you got to figure out how to bring joy to yourself. If you cannot figure out how to bring joy to yourself, nobody can. Uh, are y'all with me today? Does that make sense? Did these help y'all? Good. I want to. I want to pray. I want to pray, and we'll, we'll get ready to dismiss. But I want to pray. But before before I pray, I I just want to say, stop defining yourself by who you're in relationship with. You gotta you gotta let God define you. That man, he can't define you. That woman, she cannot define you. God's got to define you. So you got to go to God for the definition. You got to open up your Bible. Remember, back to number one. Open up your Bible. If your marriage is falling apart, if y'all's relationship is falling apart, go back to your Bible. Go back to your Bible. Go back to figuring it out. Because the truth is, hear me right here, that all definition is found in God. Okay, I, we, we've perverted relationships to where we need somebody to make us feel a certain way. And that was never the intent. Okay, you need somebody to help you build a certain thing, not to make you feel a certain way. I said something right there. boy. I do. I need somebody to help me build tabs in my life to help me build, not to make me feel. Does that make sense? She's in God gave me the right person. To help me build what he wanted me to build in my life. And God will give you the right person. If you're not, if you single you're right now, hear my heart right here. There is somebody for you. God, God has a purpose and a plan for your life. And a lot of y'all, if y'all just look around, he already in your life. She's already in your life. But you, they don't meet your qualifications. <laughs> they don't pass your little test. They're not on your list. Oh, man, we should have dealt with it. Oh, singles conference next week. No, I'm just kidding. But I, I really want to get back to this. Nobody can give you joy. Nobody can define you. You got to be defined by God. Amen? Amen. Do me a favor. Bow your heads all over the building. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for each and every person in this room. God, I pray for their lives, God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you can start to bring definition into their life, God. Start to, start to show them what you have for them, God. The design that you have for them, their life, God. Start to show them the purpose that you have for their life, God. And, and, and God, I believe, God, that you have a purpose and a plan and intention for each one of them, Lord Jesus. Lord, if they're in relationship, God, let them be better in relationship. Let them, let them better connect in relationship, God. And if they're absent of relationship right now, Lord Jesus, let, let, build them up, Lord Jesus. Let them know that you have purpose, you have plan for them, Lord Jesus, and that you have something greater on the other side for them. Lord, I, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for just being faithful to us, God. You've been a faithful God. You've been a good God, Lord Jesus. 
you've been faithful lord and we honor you and we give you the glory in jesus name amen and amen do me a favor stand up on your feet can we just take 30 seconds and give god the best praise we can give him all over this room come on come on come on come on that ain't best come on come on we can do better lord you're good god you're faithful god you're amazing god we love you we give you glory god we give you glory jesus come on come on lift your voice in here and honor your god hallelujah Thank you, lord.